Hello dear students. So this is our lecture 5 of cell the unit of life. Today we will see uh, the prokaryotic cells. Okay. Although we have seen prokaryotic cell in our uh, previous lectures in the lecture number 4 also. But in this class we will go to uh, very much details of prokaryotic cells. So the image you can see in the screen is taken from NCRT only. So just to know the relative size of different organisms found in earth. So a typical eukaryotic cell according to our NCRT uh, 10 se 20 micrometer range pe rehte. You all know what is the length of the micrometer 1 micrometer is 10 to the power minus 6 meter. Okay. And all the typical bacteria, whether it is archaebacteria or eubacteria. Okay, so all the typical bacteria are in the range 1 to 2 micrometer according to NCERT. So we have to take that only. And it is very small and one other organism which is called PPLO. PPLO are also included in prokaryotic cells. PPLO stands for Pleuronemonia. Pleuronemonia like organism. Pleuronemonia, ye naam kaasaya, dekh lete hai. The pneumonia name came from, these organisms are responsible for pneumonia like symptoms in cattle, in cow, in buffalo. So there are many mycoplasma, actually pleuronemonia like organisms are mycoplasma. And those mycoplasma are responsible for respiratory infection but not in humans in cattle so pneumonia like symptoms in cattle and viruses are in the range of 0.02 to 2.2 micrometer so we have to mug up these numbers as uh, the numbers are from ncrt the most important features that distinguishes prokaryotic cell from eukaryotic cell is the lack of lack of well defined nucleus lack of well defined nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles so as a koi bhi cell organelles nahi milega jo cell organelles pe membranes hote membrane less cell organelle mil sakta hai pe. but membrane containing cell organelles are absent so lack of well defined nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles so this property differentiates prokaryotic cell from eukaryotic cell now this lack of well defined nucleus is ko latin mein first kaha gaya tha pro so pro means here primitive or early earlier type of nucleus nucleus ko kare carrion okay so carrion means nucleus of the cell so from there the term prokaryotic and the prokaryotic cell came this primitive form of nucleus of a prokaryotic cell is also called nucleoid so last may hum look oid at kar dete. so oid means it's like nucleus so it is like nucleus but not a proper form of nucleus so nucleus like or we can say this nucleoid okay now nucleoid contains a single nucleoid contains a single circular double stranded dna so ds dna so tumhe lagega ki dna to double stranded hi hote hai according to watson and crick model but there are many dns which can be single stranded as in case of some viruses so nucleoid represents a single circular double stranded dna along with or associated with rna and protein so the single circular double stranded dna plus rna plus protein 
so in the nucleoids so there is not only dna there are some proteins as well as rna the dna of prokaryotic cells are circular in nature whereas the dna of eukaryotic cells or in or in the cells of humans also the dna is linear in nature so let's see the different forms of dna see here i'm just drawing a random dna structure just to uh, make you understand here you can see that the dna has one free end here so it's a free end hota hai pe, or one free end here okay so this dna has two free end so this is a linear form of dna whereas the dna of bacteria or prokaryotes has a circular circular form so a circular form of dna would be like this okay so there is no free end in circular dna so the bacterial dna or prokaryotic dna is circular in nature as well as there are two strands running it's not like a single strand forming a circular pattern there are two strand running parallelly so the, as there are two strands so we are calling it double stranded clear then let's see the nucleoid is also called a genophore so in bacteria the or in prokaryotes the nucleoid is also called genophore first let's see the different properties of a nucleoid so nucleoid actually represents a prokaryotic chromosomes and as we have seen that it is circular in nature and it is haploid haploids are unpaired chromosomes and diploid may paired chromosomes hote. so these are haploid chromosome unpaired and not bound by nuclear membrane complex nuclear membrane so this is normally the property of nucleoid or the region nuclear region so we look kisko nuclear region kehenge so it depends on the genetic material so the region of the cell where genetic material resides that region is called nucleoid so the nucleoid is also called genophore but when we'll say it genophore so genophore means here a super coiled or highly coiled circular dna so circular dna is highly coiled okay highly coiled circular dna associated with proteins so circular dna associated with proteins but it is highly coiled and it is called genophore so the nucleoid has another name it is also called genophore the chromosome the prokaryotic chromosome is also called prochromosome because it has not specific chromosome structure because to form a chromosome we need histone protein so to uh, to form a chromosome histone proteins are required but in bacteria or in prokaryotes there are no histone protein so the chromosomal structure or the coil structure that is formed by prokaryotic dna is called prochromosome or it is a primitive type of chromosome okay and this prokaryotic dna's are associated with some proteins and we will call these proteins nucleoid associated proteins or nap okay so nap or nucleoid associated proteins are associated with dna or circular dna histone proteins are positively charged basic proteins normally found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cell 
दिस प्रोटीन्स हेल्प इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ क्रोमोजोम सो इन केस ऑफ यू कैरियोटिक सेल क्रोमोजोम फॉर्मेशन इज प्राइमरली हेल्प्ड बाय दिस हिस्टोन प्रोटीन्स ओके फॉर दिस क्लास वील नॉट गो टू द वेरी मच डिटेल्स ऑफ हिस्टोन प्रोटीन विल सी हिस्टोन प्रोटीन इन बायोमोलिक्यूल्स विल सी हिस्टोन प्रोटीन इन सेल डिविशन ओके सो फॉर नाउ यू नीड टू नो दैट हिस्टोन प्रोटीन्स आर हिस्टोन प्रोटीन्स आर पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज बेसिक बेसिक प्रोटीन्स associated with dna in eukaryotic cells okay so in case of prokaryotic cells in place of histone proteins we have said तो इन प्लेस ऑफ हिस्टोन प्रोटीन मैंने क्या कहा था इन केस ऑफ प्रोकैरियोटिक सेल्स द प्रोटीन्स आर एन ए पी न्यूक्लियोड एसोसिएटेड प्रोटीन्स तो दिस आर नॉट केमिकली हिस्टोन तो हिस्टोन इज वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ यू कैरियोटिक सेल्स ओके क्लियर नाउ वी विल सी डिफरेंट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ बैक्टीरिया but to classify bacteria there, there has been different attempts okay so on the basis of structure on the basis of stain on the basis of uh, physiology like nutrition respiration so now let's see different system of classification of bacteria on the basis of different types so bacteria can be classified on the basis of shape of the bacteria so this is one a system of classification on the basis of shape of bacteria and this is one of the most common so on the basis of shape of bacteria there are different types of bacteria as well as on the basis of number of flagella so flagella is the locomotory organ of bacteria so on the basis of the number of flagella bacteria can be divided into many types and on the basis of mode of nutrition on the basis of mode of nutrition bacteria can be divided into many types also on the basis of mode of respiration mode of respiration bacteria can be divided into some types okay for first let's see types of bacteria on the basis of shape of the bacteria okay so let's see different shapes of bacteria if the shape of the bacteria is spherical like this spherical so if the shape is spherical then we will call those bacteria coccus coccus the shape of the bacteria can be cylindrical the shape of the bacteria can be cylindrical like this so it is called rod shaped rod shaped bacteria and this bacteria are named as bacillus bacillus clear now another shape some bacteria can be some deformed sphere Uh, this bacteria are called comma shaped comma shaped and they are called vibrio vibrio okay there are some bacteria which which are like spirals spirals so bacteria rod shaped but it is in a it is spiraling and this bacteria we can call it spiral shaped 
and this is called spirillum. Some bacteria are in the shape of screw, so screw shaped, screw shaped bacteria. Okay, this bacteria are called spirochet, spirochet. So these are different uh, types of bacteria on the basis of shape. There are some bacteria also which we can call coccobacillus, like sphere along with rod. So rod shaped as well as sphere. In dono ko agar ek saath pe dekhte, na totally spherical, na rod shaped. So it becomes almost like an ellipse, ellipsoid. Not just oval. This type of bacteria are called coccobacillus. Coccobacillus. So these are the different types of bacteria on the basis of shape. So major one, two, three, four, and five. These five types are, are the major types of uh, bacteria on the basis of shape. Now let's see different examples of these five common type of bacteria on the basis of shape. So, in case of spherical type of bacteria like coccus, one of the most common example is streptococcus. So, it is one of the most common example. Streptococcus is responsible for pneumonia in human. So, streptococcus can cause the disease pneumonia, a respiratory infection. Okay, then we'll see uh, another example from Bacillus, a most common example from Bacillus, like the Lactobacillus. So, Lactobacillus is responsible for the formation of card. Card formation. Then from Vivrio. One of the most common example is uh, Vivrio cholerae. Vivrio cholerae, and it causes the disease cholera, an infection of intestine. Then we can uh, see the example of spirillum. Okay, first you need to know the difference between spirillum and spirochit. Spirillum and spirochit are almost similar in shape, but the spirillum is just a genus, whereas spirochit is a more broader taxonomic category. So, spirochit is a phylum of bacteria. So, spirochit is a more broader taxonomic category. It is a phylum, whereas spirillum is just a genus. In spirillum, we can get an example or a common example like Campylobacter. Campylobacter or specific species is the jejuni. So Campylobacter jejuni. This is one of the most common cause, most common or if not most, one of the common cause of food poisoning. Food poisoning. So it can cause diarrhea, vomiting. So Campylobacter jejuni. Spirochit. In Spirochit, one of the most common example is Triponema pallidum. Triponema. Pallidum. Triponema pallidum is the bacteria which is responsible for a reproductive tract infection. Triponema pallidum is one of the important bacteria and it is related to sexually transmitted disease like syphilis. So it is related to a sexually transmitted disease called syphilis. So syphilis is a STD. These are the common examples based on the shape of the bacteria. But in textbooks you can also find that there are some other types as well. 
those types are based on the arrangement of bacteria so let's see different arrangement of bacteria and accordingly their types if more than one coccus bacteria is arranged say two coccus bacteria are attached to one another bacteria are unicellular organism but sometimes they form colonies and in colonies they remain attached to one another so when two bacteria are attached to one another then it is called diplococcus if the shape of the bacteria is coccus or spherical so then we will call that arrangement diplococcus so on the basis of shape the bacteria is coccus or the bacteria is spherical but on the basis of arrangement the bacteria is diplococcus if more than three four coccus bacteria are attached to one another then we'll call it streptococcus so here the strepto term came from chain like so strepto okay but it is not that the bacteria is multicellular here each cell is an organism just they are forming a colony the bacteria can remain in the form of cluster so many spherical bacteria are clustered to form staphylococcus so the term staphylo came from the cluster another type of arrangement formed by coccus bacteria is called sarcina this type of arrangement is formed by eight coccus bacteria so eight coccus forms a specific three dimensional geometry so eight coccus bacteria forms a specific 3d structure which is called sarcina type of arrangement and when a single coccus bacteria remains so when a solitary or a single coccus bacteria so we can call it monococcus so monococcus as in case of double coccus bacteria we were calling it diplococcus so in case of a single coccus bacteria we can call it monococcus so normally coccus and bacillus forms colony so this is one of the important statement that coccus and bacillus forms colony whereas vibrio spirillum spirochit does not forms colony okay so the spherical bacteria when remains in the form of four coccus bacteria so four coccus bacteria is called a tetracoccus tetracoccus so the statement is that coccus and bacillus coccus and bacillus hardly remain solitary so forms colony coccus and bacillus forms colonies whereas vibrio vibrio then spirillum spirillum spirochit or we can call it spirochit c a c h a e t e so this bacteria does not form colonies or this bacteria remains solitary so single single bacteria ek sath microscope pe mil sakta hai they are not attached together so remains solitary so let's see some arrangements in case of bacillus so in case of bacillus like the arrangement would be diplo bacillus so when when two rod shaped bacteria remain attached to each other so diplo bacillus it can be strepto bacillus strepto bacillus one arrangement is called pelised pelised bacillus pelised bacillus let's see that arrangement you can easily recall from diplococcus that diplo bacillus would be two rod shaped uh, bacteria attached to each other strepto bacillus would be many rod shaped bacillus attached to each other 
whereas pele said bacillus is like forming a stack so when many rod shaped bacillus forming a stack so stack of rod shaped bacteria are also called pele said type of bacillus there are some other shapes of bacteria as well and those shapes are not that much stable so all those unstable shapes of bacteria we can study those under pleomorphic shapes of bacteria so pleomorphic shapes when the pleomorphic morphic means here morphology and here pleo means different so different type of morphology of bacteria we can study like so one of the shape is a mycelial shape so it's like a filament mycelial shape another shape is like budded shape so bacteria which looks like it is budding another shape is like stalked shape so it looks like stalk so these are different pleomorphic bacteria so different shapes of bacteria which are not that much stable or different morphology morphic means morphology or external appearance or pleo means here different okay but the major types of bacteria that we have studied are these only spherical rod shaped comma shaped spiral shaped and screw shaped then on the basis of the number of flagella on the basis of number of flagella we can divide bacteria into many types so let's see on the basis of number of flagella bacteria can be classified into six major types and one of the important type is atrichus that means in that type of bacteria there are no flagella so there are no flagella at all so so let me write those bacterial types so one of the classification type is a trichus so in a trichus bacteria there are no flagella at all so if this is coccus then there are no flagella if this is rod shaped then also there are no flagella so just simple shaped bacteria without any flagella so a trichus but if the bacteria has a single flagella from one of its pole so pole means pole means if there are polarity structural polarity so if the structure is rod shaped then there are two pole if the structure is coccus means spherical then there are no pole so there are no pole by pole i am referring to structural polarity so next see that monotrichus is one of the type of bacteria based on a flagellar number so monotrichus as the name suggests that there are only one flagella from one of its pole say this is uh, from this bacillus shaped bacteria if one flagella is coming out then we will call that bacteria a monotrichus then another type of bacteria on the basis of uh, number is the is the amphitrichus so in case of amphitrichus bacteria there are two flagella coming out from two opposite pole so from this pole one flagella from that pole another flagella so from a bacteria from the opposite poles one one flagella coming out that is amphitrichus another type of bacteria is lophotrichus so in case of lophotrichus there are tuft of flagella so many flagella coming out or a bunch of flagella coming out from one of the pole of that bacteria so if the bacteria is rod shaped then from one of the pole many flagellas are coming out then we'll call it lophotrichus okay let me give the numbers here so there in case of the this diagram where we can see a coccus bacteria there are no flagella so we can call it atrichus then second it was monotrichus so in case of that upper rod shaped bacteria only one flagella coming out from one of its pole that is our monotrichus bacteria and here from a rod shaped bacteria two flagella coming out from two opposite pole and that is amphitrichus and 
Fourth, here we can see that from a rod shaped bacteria, many flagellas are coming out from one of its pool. Now, another type is Cephalotrichus, Cephalotrichus bacteria. Cephalotrichus bacteria are also called Amphilophotrichus. So, as the name suggests, you can easily understand Amphilophotrichus. So, only Lophotrichus, in case of only or in case of the fourth type or Lophotrichus, there were a bunch of flagella coming out from one pole. Now, it is Amphi, that means two. So, from both the pole of a rod shaped bacteria, tuft of flagella coming out. Okay, and our final another type is the peritrichus type of bacteria. In case of peritrichus bacteria, what will happen that there are many flagella coming out of bacteria from all over the body. So, if this is the bacteria from all over the body, many flagella are coming out, and this is one of the most common type of bacteria found in human. Even in our body, we will find many peritrichus bacteria. And the example is E. coli, Escherichia coli. So, E. coli is an example of peritrichus bacteria. That means flagella coming out from all over the body. So, a quick recap, we can see here that monotrichus, single flagella at one pole, lophotrichus, tuft of flagella at one pole, amphitrichus, a single flagella from one pole, so from two pole, two flagella, amphitrichus, peritrichus flagella all over the body, and amphilophotrichus, or we called it cephalotrichus, tuft of flagella from the two end or the two pole. Now, let's see different examples of bacteria on the basis of their shape, on the basis of their arrangement, as well as the number of flagella. So, see here, here you can see that coccus, coccus are of different types on the basis of their arrangement, like diplococcus, two coccus bacteria, two spherical shaped bacteria. So, here an example is streptococcus pneumoniae. So, the name suggests streptococcus, but they may remain in the form of double coccus or diplococcus. So, streptococcus pneumoniae, which is responsible for pneumonia. So, the bacteria and its disease or the disease caused by it. Here you can also see streptococcus pyogenes. So, here a complete chain forming bacteria. So, all the spherical bacteria are forming a chain and it is called streptococcus pyogenes. And this bacteria are responsible for a, a fever which is called a rheumatic fever. So, rheumatic fever is caused by streptococcus pyogenes. Also, you can see some other bacteria like Bacillus anthracis, which is responsible for anthrax. So, the disease anthrax is caused by Bacillus anthracis. And it is a rod shaped bacteria, Bacillus, and it forms chain. So, we can call it also Streptobacillus. Clear? Here you can also see another bacteria Salmonella typhi, one of the most common bacteria responsible for typhoid and this bacteria is a rod shaped bacteria, so Salmonella. So there is no mention of the name Bacillus, but the bacteria is a rod shaped bacteria, Salmonella typhi. And, in, and from that bacteria, flagella are coming out all over the body. So we can also call it a peritrichus bacteria like E. coli. So, Salmonella typhi and E. coli, which we have seen in the earlier slide, are peritrichus type of bacteria. Then you can see Staphylococcus aureus. This bacteria, a cluster forming bacteria, Staphylo, and another bacteria, Sarcina ventriculi. So, a eight uh, cell cluster. So, a eight cell three dimensional geometry, Sarcina. Okay. Now, here you can see Vibrio cholerae, and in Vibrio cholerae, you can properly observe that there are only one, there are only one flagella. So, one flagella means we can also say it is a monotrichus type of bacteria. And Helicobacter pylori, 
all of you have learned about this in your class 10th syllabus where the ulcer is mentioned so the peptic ulcer or the ulcer in stomach or the in the inner lining of stomach can be caused by one of the bacteria called helicobacter pylori so helicobacter pylori has a tuft of flagella so so many flagella coming out from one of its pole so it is under lophotrichus so considering shape of the bacteria it is spiral shaped and considering the number of flagella it is lophotrichus so now you know different diseases caused by this bacteria and their shape arrangements and the flagella number so here there is another example of bacteria and it forms spore spore former it is written here spore former so a spore forming bacteria called clostridium botulinum so this clostridium botulinum is responsible for a disease called botulism and in this disease the patient suffers from paralysis of muscle and it forms spore inside the cell and this spore helps the bacteria to survive unfavorable environment clear and this spore is also a toxin for human so the spore is responsible for a toxin or it causes some reaction inside our body that there occurs paralysis of muscle and the toxin is called botulin so botulin is the toxin produced by clostridium botulinum and staphylococcus aureus you also know that staphylococcus aureus is responsible for pimple formation staphylococcus is also responsible for some heart diseases like heart valve disease it is also responsible for another heart disease called endocarditis okay just recap the different names or different examples of bacteria based on the number of flagella so let's see this slide so in a trichus a trichus type of bacteria so where there are no flagella an example is lactobacillus which is found in curd or the bacteria are responsible for the formation of curd monotrichus we have already seen vibrio cholerae so the bacteria responsible for the disease cholera amphitrichus that means flagella arising from both the poles of the bacteria and one of the example is nitrosomonas the bacteria responsible for nitrogen fixation another important uh, category lophotrichus an example we have already seen in the previous slide and that was helicobacter pylori responsible for peptic ulcer peritrichus we have seen two examples one is e coli and another is salmonella typhi so escherichia coli and salmonella typhi